Hey everyone, I have something so important to talk to you about. This is like shocking news that I found when I was doing some research yesterday. You know how like after your hair is kind of where you want it to be and it's healthy and everything, you start to get this strange itch, this strange need to color your hair. It already looks beautiful and healthy, but now you just want a different color for some reason. You just get this weird itch. It's really unexplainable. I don't know what it is, but I have gotten it before and I had it again um, yesterday. And actually for the past week, I'd say I've been thinking about coloring my hair. I had actually sworn off color after my last chop. And if you go back to my hair history video, you'll see like color was always the main reason why I had to cut my hair. But, um, you know, you think again, well, maybe it'll work this time, I'll take better care of my hair this time, blah, blah, blah. While looking up the type of color I wanted to use, I came across something extremely disturbing. So let me just tell you. I went to Jewel, and I picked out some colors. Two to be exact. L'Oreal Feria Multifaceted Shimmering Color. And L'Oreal Paris um, Superior Preference Fade Defying Color. And I wanted something like that. Thought, okay, this would look good against my skin tone. My hair is really dark, so it'll come out like this if I do it. With this one, my hair is a bit, like darker than this, so it would come out darker than this. So I thought that'd be a nice color. So I just got both because I didn't know which one I actually wanted. But while reading about the different colors, and these are both permanent colors, while reading about that I came across something very disturbing. So now there is a warning, warning, warning for anyone who cares about their hair and is thinking of coloring. This is extremely important. Watch out for metallic salts in hair dyes and hennas. Watch out for those. Those are complete crap. They will ruin your hair. Now, let me get into my notes. What are they? These are permanent dyes and compound hennas that are made of metallic salts such as lead, bismuth, silver, and copper, just to name a few. How do they work? The sulfur in the metallic salts bonds permanently with the keratin and cysteine, which are proteins and amino acids naturally found in human hair. They bond to these to gradually darken the hair over time. This means that the process leaves residue that accumulates on the hair shaft and the reaction continues to take place over a period of time, gradually darkening the hair for a more natural look. So it's darkening it gradually so that it's not just a big, bam, light brown to black in one day. Gradual is the, uh, the key word here. Now here are the effects of said metallic salts on your hair. The color quality of metallic dyes on hair is poor and unpredictable. Also the, hair fi also, the hair fibers become stiff, dull, and brittle after application of these dyes. That already sounds bad in the first place. Now when you dye hair, obviously it is lifting the cuticle. Um, if it's permanent color, it has ammonium and or peroxide, which is drying out the hair. So that's a given, but these do, these do more damage than a normal dye. Um, now here's where it gets interesting. Okay, listen. You cannot apply any chemical treatments like other coloring, relaxer, Brazilian keratin treatment, or any other chemical treatment. Okay, or any other chemical uh, chemical treatment because the trace metals of metallic dyes gets deposited on the hair shaft, and these will interfere with the chemical interactions in the hair fiber. Again, no ammonia-based product should ever be used over a metallic color, ever. Never, ever, ever. Why? If you do, the result will be smoked, burned, and melted hair. This 
metallic salt dye also changes the texture of your hair. So with the chemical reaction of the metallic salts on your hair that can never um, get out of your hair, when that's on your hair along with any other chemical process, especially a chemical process that is ammonia based, is added to your hair, your hair will burn and melt off. Literally. A chemical burn. That sounds horrible to me. And what's scary is sometimes a stylist won't even ask you what color is already in your hair or if you have colored your hair um, with a metallic dye. And you might not even know. So they wouldn't even sometimes test to see. So they'll just slap something else on your hair and bam, your hair is, ch your hair is fried and it's chewed off. Okay, another side note about metallic dyes. If you do use this, make sure you cleanse your hands thoroughly. If you ingest any orally or contaminate food, it can be fatal. People using these dyes have experienced hair loss, breakage, lead poisoning, headaches, and scalp ir irritations, just to name a few. So obviously, I don't know why this is, but anything containing these metallic dyes should definitely have a warning label on it. Should have a big fat metallic salts, contains metallic salts on, on the box of the product, but it doesn't. And sometimes they are actually hidden in the ingredients, so you can't even tell. Sometimes they're not even written in the ingredients at all. So I'm going to get into how you can tell and find out. Where are they? Look at the ingredients. The most often used metals are copper, silver, lead, and bismuth, and bismuth citrate. Um, also, Grecian formula dyes contain metallic salts because they claim to gradually darken the hair. Another way to check is to actually look at the product. Um, sometimes when you squirt it out, you can see an unpleasant greenish undertone under the light. So the actual dye has a greenish under, has a greenish undertone when you check under light. L'Oreal's Feria permanent hair color and Nice and Easy have been said to contain metallic salts. This is what I've read on blogs um, and other places on the internet. I have not called the companies, so you know, use at your own discretion. And that's scary because I actually bought a L'Oreal Feria just yesterday. Thank God I did this research before applying any of this to my hair. So both of these are going back to the store because I don't know about this one. This one I'm pretty suspicious about. Um, I'll call the companies but even if they don't I have a better option for you guys that I'll explain at the end. Okay so yeah that's out. Um, now I did mention hennas earlier so let's get into hennas and you wouldn't think henna could be bad for your hair because it's natural. So let's get into the how you can tell with hennas. Compound henna refers to hair dye marketed as henna that is formulated in different colors. These mixtures contain additional plant dyes and metallic salts to achieve different colors other than the actual pure henna color. There's no such plant as blonde henna, brown henna, or black henna. The henna plant has only one dye molecule, and that molecule is red-orange. Chemicals, metallic salts, or other dye plants must be added to the henna to make any color other than red. So unless you want red, henna is not going to change your hair to any other color without adding metallic salts to the mix. To spot a compound henna, look for lead acetate, silver nitrate, copper, nickel, cobalt, bismuth, and iron salts. Note, some countries where these products are initially manufactured do not have laws requiring the declaration of ingredients in cosmetics. So they can put anything they want in the box and they don't have to tell you what is it what it is. Another note, professionals do not use these products because they do not work with other oxidized solutions that they use in salons. So a professional salon would not put a, a metallic salt dye in your hair. 
Now that's not to say that if you go to a salon, um, you shouldn't ask what they're using. Because I will definitely grill a stylist on what the hell she's putting in my hair. But you can rest assured that it's probably not going to be likely that a high-end professional salon would do such a thing. Another note, call the product manufacturer if you're not sure whether or not your at-home dye contains metallic salts, okay? So, when I looked on the Farrier box, I didn't see anything that was a telltale sign of metallic salts. But I've just heard enough about how drying it is on your hair and how the color sucks anyway and how it doesn't come out how it's supposed to for me to not want to use it. And if it contains metallic salts, it's all the more reason. But if it doesn't even work well and it's more drying than normal dyes, it's garbage to me. This again, I don't know if it has metallic salts or not in it, for sure. But again, I have a different option that I'm going to be doing really soon. So let me get into that. I have done this before and I did this a lot when I was younger and I didn't even know what it was, but my mom used to take me to get a cellophane treatment. So I will be doing a cellophane treatment on my hair very soon. It's not as harsh, no ammonium peroxide, um, and it's definitely not permanent, but that's okay with me. So in another video, I'll talk about cellophane treatments, but for today, I just wanted to warn you all on the hazards and dangers of using dyes and hennas that contain metallic salts. Watch out for that. It should be on the label. It's not on the label for whatever reason. But, you know, you do not, and I do not want to see anyone of you ladies that has actually worked to maintain your hair and you keep it looking good and healthy have to be set back years. Literally, if you dye your hair with this stuff, you will be set back years, depending on how long your hair is, at least two to three years to regrow it back to um, its perfectly healthy state. So, you know. Use at your own risk. I would never advise anyone to use anything that contains metallic dyes, but if you do know that you cannot do anything to your hair, any chemical treatment of any kind to your hair ever again on that hair that was treated with the metallic dyes, and that your hair will be in poor condition and probably not even take, um, not even really hold a good color. So that's just some advice for me, a warning. And I will see you guys very soon. If you have any questions, put them below. I put some links below as well to, um, to guide you guys who want more information on this. Also, information on how to possibly remove metallic salts from your hair. It's a long, drawn-out process that is extremely damaging to your hair. So, better just to not even use it. But if you already have, there's information about how to remove them. Um, and more about how to check the hennas that you use as well. So thank you for watching everyone. I will see you very soon. Bye.